Hey everybody and welcome in to another week where we're going to recap what happened over the weekend on the Monday Rewind. I am your host Kirsten Kroll joined alongside McHatton, Raj Schlossman, Matt Wellens, and Jess Myers. Fellas, how are we doing this morning? Doing pretty well. It's still very cold. I'm tired of being I met, cold. I miss tropical Denver. <laughs> and it's 40 and 55 degrees. I mean, it snowed one day, but it was 45, 55 degrees the next. So yeah, I miss tropical Denver. Heck, I miss the tropical Twin Cities. That's even warmer than Duluth right now. Here, here's what I learned in tropical central Ohio over the weekend. They don't shovel their sidewalks when they get snow. <laughs> like, like the sidewalks were just treacherous everywhere because they got snow like a week and a half ago. And they just leave it there because they figure it's going to melt soon enough anyway. Eventually it'll get there, right? Brad, how about you up in North Dakota? I haven't checked the weather outside today yet, but it's sunny out. Sunny is always a plus. I went to Target yesterday and checked my phone, solid zero degrees, and I was still wearing sandals outside. So things are warming up here in Minnesota. And speaking of warming up, taking a look at the Olympics, for example, as we're recording this this morning, Team USA took down Finland four to one, advancing to the gold medal round against Canada. Guys, what did we take away from that matchup? The UF, US is still a little offensively challenged. If, if we thought that uh, quarterfinal game was maybe a fluke, uh, the, the semifinal one shows that um, they're, they're going to need to play some really good defense, um, really, really good defense if, if they want to keep up with Canada in the, in the gold medal game on, on Wednesday because uh, Canada has, man, just un this team has unbelievable firepower. And, and I think... Um, you know, four years ago, Canada wasn't getting much produ offensive production for the blue line or help from the blue line. And they are now. And it's, and it's just turned that offense up a notch. What, what are they, uh, I'm trying to understand where, what Joel's strategy is, I guess, with the goaltending, because uh, I think it was Cavallini, you know, played today. I mean, uh, you know, Rooney, obviously, is, when you think of four years ago or whatever, I mean, you, you think of Matty Rooney. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out where where he's going. I mean, who's, who plays against Canada then, Matt? I think it's Cavallini. I mean, I think they, you know, they, they played Rooney in that final preliminary round game against Canada. And again, granted, Canada's offense is just, I mean, it's on another level, but Matty wasn't great, um, you know, she wasn't great in that game. She wasn't, you know, phenomenal either in that first preliminary game against Finland, a team that, you know, as we've seen is kind of offensively challenged in this tournament. Um, I thought Nicole Hensley would actually be the, the go-to in this, but they've gone with Cavallini. Um, I, I don't think she's blown me away, but maybe she's been the most consistent. I am a little worried that Cavallini hasn't really been tested yet um, much, uh, you know, Rooney's, Rooney's the only one of the three, I think, going back to the even the Worlds that has a win over Canada. Um, you know, I think they're going to go with Cavallini. I, that that would be my expectation. I mean, the history with Maddie Rooney is she needs to get on a roll. She needs to build momentum. We saw it at UMD, saw it in the Olympics even four years ago. She's got to be the number one, the unquestioned number one to build that confidence and go on a roll um, to, to pull her out now and, and throw her in there. You know, I, I wouldn't expect, I, I don't know. I don't, the U S might be in a no win situation in, in these Olympics uh, taking on Canada. I mean, they're just so offensively powerful right now, but um, my money's on Cavallini starting uh, the gold medal game. Yeah, the amazing part to me is they centralize for six months. And now here we are in the final two days and we still don't know who the goaltender is. They still have two defensemen who they're too scared to play against Chechia. Like, what are we doing here? If we're, why centralize for six months if you get to the very end and you still have no idea what you got with your team? I, you know, it, it seems uh, bizarre the way it is played out. And honestly, four years ago, it was the same thing. They centralize and all of a sudden you go to the Olympics and Oh, Monique Lamoureux and uh, Gigi Marvin are going to play different positions now. Um, oh, you know, we're going to switch the power play mid Olympics. Like it, it's crazy to me that uh, they centralize for that long and they get to the end and they still don't have, you know, you know, j just think of like NCAA tournaments. 
when you go into the NCAA tournament, you know who's starting in goal 95% of the time. You know what the power play units are. You know what the lines are going to be. Like, it, it's it's interesting. Yeah, I mean, on the men's side, you, you you would understand it a lot more, right? I mean, these are a bunch of guys, I mean, a bunch of guys that they basically threw together, like, for three days in Los Angeles, and then they flew them off to China. And so uh, you understand a little bit more, I guess, there where they're kind of feeling things out and trying to, you know, figure out, okay, you know, certain things are going to work. Certain things aren't going to work. I mean, they've got a lot of young players. I mean, one of the things that's been interesting, I'll, I'll just switch over to the men's side for just a quick second, but I mean, you know, one of the interesting things I think with the men's team uh, it has been, to me that uh, you know, how those veterans have really kind of led that team, you know, I mean, it's been Comfer and it's been Andy Mealy has had a, a really good, good start. I mean, I, I know that, you know, that, that uh, is it Farrell from, you know, had the hat trick or whatever the first game, but I mean, really, I mean, their consistency has come from those, those veteran guys. I don't know if you guys felt the same way when you watched them or not. Mealy has been great. He's, he's been uh, noticeably really good I think I like uh, I like what you said Brad I mean I, I absolutely agree I can't believe this late in the game we're still <laughs> unsure and you know I'm reminded of one of the funnier tweets I saw yesterday in the run-up to the Super Bowl uh, so somebody tweeted out that the, the biggest surprise of Super Bowl Sunday was going to be that quarterback Brandon Allen was going to be starting for Cincinnati because he had really impressed in practice leading up to the game you know just stuff like that that you would never see and, and and yet, like you say, here we are heading into the gold medal game, still kind of juggling the lineup. It's it's uh, it's puzzling. Now, uh, Joel Johnson's won a few more games than I have, so I'm not going to question him too hard. Uh, he obviously knows what he's doing, but uh, I, I, so I just assume there's a plan in place. Yeah, and we hammered Rob Stauber pretty hard uh, four years ago, and, and things worked out well, you know. But but Stauber had a plan in goal, like that. That is, you know, the defenseman thing is, it's it's odd. I mean, even against Finland again, why why are you not playing? All, all your defensemen, that's not an offensively, you know, powerhouse team. I mean, Switzerland is probably, when you look at Czechia and, and Finland, Switzerland, because of that top line with Lara Stalder, uh, is probably more offensively dangerous than, than these two teams. So the defenseman thing is odd. I, I don't know what's going on particularly there. Uh, the goaltending thing, I, I think part of it is no one really has emerged, like Matty Rooney hasn't emerged as, as the unquestioned Number one, if you've been following the team, you know, it's been up and down. She's, she came off that injury that uh, forced her to miss the worlds and some extended time. Maybe that threw the goaltending rotation into a, a loop. You know, I didn't think it was bad in the preliminary round. It seemed like there was a play to the preliminary round. If you play all three goaltenders, um, Maddie plays against Canada. And I guess they just didn't like what they saw from her in that game against Canada and have gone with uh, Cavallini here. Um, it, it'll be interesting. Again, four years ago, we all ripped Rob Stauber and, and uh, he came out with an Olympic gold medal, but man, this Canada team is just really, really good. Like we're on the men's side. I mean, the U S men have been impressive for what I've seen. They've uh, they didn't coordinate their schedule with mine very well. Either I've been in an airplane or, or covering uh, hockey games in the mountain time zone. Um, but you know, from what I've seen that they're, they're probably the most solid team, those young, that player of young strategy, you know, Hey, we're all, we're all brilliant on the men's side, right guys. I mean, was it all of us, I think were claiming four years ago, they needed to get more uh, younger players out there and sure enough, it's working. Um, you know, yeah, it, it's interesting. The dynamics of the two tournaments, because the women, you have teams that centralized for, for months and months here of uh, the men's tournaments, they've all been thrown together. And um, at least on the U S side, um, David Quinn and Mike Hastings and, and Brett Larson, they seem to have one heck of a solid plan. In, in place. It's been a great coaching job. The three of them have done um, again with the short time span to not only prepare, but just prepare in general. I mean, three days in LA and you only name the team, you know, a few weeks prior. That's a heck of a job they're doing over there. Yeah, it has been exciting so far. And like we mentioned, talking about the women's team when we were first discussing that an exciting matchup coming up against USA and Canada for the gold medal round with despite having a few question marks and then men's team impressing here early on. Now we got a lot to unpack here. So we're going to transition topics. All four of you guys, super busy over the weekend. First off though, I want to ask Jess, you were over in Ohio. How was the chili you had? <laughs> I, I got to go to Skyline Chili. Now I made a tragic mistake because they had cans of chili for sale there. 
And I thought, oh no, I can get it at the Walmart back uh, near where I live because they used to sell it there. Well, I found out yesterday morning they no longer sell Skyline Chili here in Minnesota. So I should have like loaded up my, my bag, but no, no, I, I did get uh, Cincinnati chili and I had some yesterday during the, during the big game, trying to bring some luck to the Bengals. It didn't work, but, but Hey, I tried. Um, uh, Ohio state, you know, is kind of the surprise team of the big 10 this year. They came into this series having gone unbeaten in their last seven. Um, I am really impressed by what the Gophers have done in the last couple of weeks. And, you know, I wrote about this in my story on the rink live.com. But when Jack LaFontaine left, and it was about the same time that they learned that they would lose those three guys of the Olympics for six games, there was this feeling that, oh boy, what do we do now? Is this a, kind of a new start for the team? And one of the really cool moments was Garrett Raboyne, their assistant coach, wrote on the whiteboard in the locker room, we have all that we need. Meaning, yep, we're going to make a change in goal, but it's not like the sky is falling. Yeah, we're going to lose a couple guys for three weeks, but it's not like the sky is falling. And then Bob Motzko, to his credit, put a little addendum on the bottom and he said, and we need all that we have. In other words, no more passengers. Everybody needs to contribute. Everybody needs to be in the lineup. What's really impressive that I've seen in these last four games that they've won, uh, two at home against Michigan State and then two at Ohio State, in which they played very well, is we wondered what would happen when the Niners line went away. And that was Matthew Nyes, Ben Myers, Chaz Lucius. All of them have a nine on their jersey, so they're the Niners. Uh, Chaz Lucius has been moved to what's called the Young Guns line, which is Rhett Pitlick, Brett Hugh, uh, Aaron Huglin, and and Chaz Lucius. Now, they've really given some scoring balance to this team because that line is scoring, and then the usual suspects of Sammy Walker, uh, Bryce Brodzinski, and and Blake McLaughlin are scoring. So it, it has really worked to balance things. And I guess that's my biggest question for what happens two weeks from now when those three guys are back from the Olympics is does he reunite the Niners or does he leave Chaz Lucius where he is on that young guns line and, and see what they can do Uh big series this weekend at Penn state. Obviously the Gophers are right now back in the hunt for the big 10 title where they had dropped a third place uh, last week. Now they're uh, right behind Michigan. They're going to need a little help. Somebody's going to have to knock off Michigan here in the last two weeks for the Gophers to claim the big title, big 10 title. And of course the Gophers are going to have to win the, their final four games, but uh, fun, fun to see what this team has done in the last couple of weeks. For sure. And Jess, rookie mistake, not making sure you brought any chili back home. I'm also going to blame the Bengals loss on you for, okay. I don't really right. know how to I'll, back that up yet, but since you were in Cincinnati, I just, I'll, I'm I'll, seeing I'll, some connections there. I'll wear that one. Yep. That's, that's on me. Sorry. Uh, who day nation or whatever it is <laughs> better luck next time right well thank you jess and we know you'll keep us posted with all the gopher coverage now another big weekend moving things over to tropical paradise of denver colorado matt huge series for umd what was going on over there uh yeah two very different games for, for the bulldogs the first one um well first off uh umd not just only missing noah cates to the olympics but uh they lose dominic james in the tuesday game in st cloud um, Friday night in Denver, Wyatt Kaiser suffers a lower body injury as, as well. Um, so they go into Saturday's game after getting beat pretty bad. Um, Denver looks, by the way, just phenomenal. They, um, they're one of the top team, if not the top team in, in the country right now, just play great. Um, they man, they handle the Bulldogs pretty easily on Friday, Saturday, UMD's, uh, in a tough spot, uh, Ryan Fanti uh, disappears after the first period. Uh, we see him leave really quickly at the end of the, the first period. And uh, just before the second uh, period starts, uh, UMD's director of operations, Christian Kelly, leads down to Bruce Siski and I and says, hey, there's an early Valentine's Day gift coming your guys' way. And, and Siski apparently knew right away what it was. I was trying to figure out why Christian was sending, trying to send me a romantic gift during the second period of Denver on on Saturday, uh, turns out, uh, turn and look and Zach Stasekel, uh, is the first, uh, guy out of the gate and into the goal and, and getting ready to play. And, and for those that don't know about Zach Stasekel, the, uh, Cohasset native, um, not to be confused with the other Cohasset native that the Bulldogs had goal Hunter Shepard before, but, um, former Grand Rapids Thunderhawk in the fall, he was diagnosed with uh, testicular cancer. So he's been going through Kibo and everything. Um, after the break, uh, it was actually uh, New Year's, well, the day, New Year's Eve Eve at Med Cato, I believe. Um, he's finally back on the bench. He's been practicing. Um, but, yeah, he had to go in for the second period, finishes the game, gets the, the win in Denver. Um, Kobe Roth scores two goals. Uh, Jess, where's Kobe Roth from? Uh, Mason City, Iowa, I believe. Uh, there we go. Um, 
<laughs> but he just, played high school hockey in War Road. So hockey give you give USA. you the War Road layup there, and you just you pass it up. Anyways, I'm, um, I'm an no, enigma and, that way. <laughs> No, incredible night. Zach Stasekel wasn't planning to be. I think they were hoping to get him in a game soon here. Um, they weren't exactly sure when. Again, the guy had testicular cancer. He's gone through chemotherapy. Um, he's finally getting a little fuzz back on, on his head here now. Um, man, tough, tough time to not have any uh, hair uh, in, in Minnesota with how, how cold it's been and such. But uh, yeah, no, it was an incredible game uh, for him. He made some huge saves. He looks, he looks, you wouldn't know. And some of the, the Denver radio guy who was calling it, uh, he didn't realize what was going on initially at first. I mean, if you didn't know his story, you'd think, all right, Zach Stasekel's back from whatever. And he's, he looks great. Um, it was just a cool, cool moment. It was cool to talk to him after the game. He was pretty excited to get back in there. Um, by the way, Ryan Fanti, it's not a long-term injury. Um, they're not exactly sure what the illness is that hit the team, uh, maybe food related, noro related. Uh, the entire team got hit pretty hard just before the game on, on Saturday. So uh, Ryan Fanti made it through a period and he was really good the first period too. Um, if that is indeed norovirus that hit them and he played like that with norovirus, my God. Um, he had a great penalty uh, shot that he stopped there in the first period, 13 saves. But um, yeah, it was a gutsy win for a Bulldogs. It was a big win. They really needed it. Um, Darian goes from Hermantown gets the game winner. Um, just, just a crazy, crazy way. The night night flipped when you went from Friday to Saturday, Matt, Matt, how bad is why Kaiser off? Because I, I think he's a really key guy for them. I mean, uh, you know, how, how bad is his injury or what do you, what, what are kind of the early things you're kind of hearing there? Yeah. Just, just lower body is all, all I know right now. Uh, we'll find out more when we talk to Scott on, on Wednesday. Um, I believe the entire team has the day off today as they're recovering from, whatever uh stomach bug uh from what it sounds like hit the team um i'm just happy i didn't catch the stomach bug when i was down by the locker room after the game uh blake Biondi's parents were also happy after they hugged their son that they after the game that they didn't get it as, as well that was the talk at the airport on, on sunday um so yeah wyatt kaiser he's a big part of that that power play but you know this weekend it was you didn't see it on Friday, people stepping up for UMD for, for the guys that were gone, but you saw it Saturday. I mean, Darian Goats, the, the goal he scored on the game winner is he basically filled in the role that, that Wyatt Kaiser would um, a puck, you know, scrambling by the net, Blake beyond, he made a great, you know, quick pass back to him and, and goats fired it in. So, uh, I mean, this is what we're used to in the Bulldogs, right? We just haven't seen it from a, in a consistent basis this season of, of those, you know, random guys, uh, stepping up. And speaking of random guys, uh, Luke Melamock, uh, also made his uh, return this weekend playing his first game since the, the frozen four Luke, of course, the guy who ended that great North Dakota team season a year ago. Ooh, Ooh, I setting, setting Brad up for when I give the mic over to him next, but Matt, thank you so much for all that. And that's going to be exciting to see down the stretch if, Minnesota Duluth was able to play like that with a stomach bug against Denver, who is one of the top teams. Brad, I'll send it over to you now, whether you have something to follow up with Matt or just let us know what's going on in North Dakota. Yeah, you know, they're, uh, they're pretty banged up right now. Um, they, uh, they played this weekend, uh, almost the entire weekend with 17 guys and five defensemen. Um, you know, they, uh, did they, they had 18 guys available. Cooper Moore got a five minute major eight minutes into Friday night's game, got suspended for Saturday night. So they played the entire, uh, basically both games with 5d. And it wasn't just that they had 5d, you know, you're missing, um, some guys that play huge minutes for them. You're missing, um, Sanderson, Ferner, Moore, who are, you know, all top 5d. And so um, on Friday night, Ethan Frisch played 31 minutes, which is incredible in a 60 minute hockey game to do that. Uh, you had, uh, you know, basically all five guys played their season high in minutes this weekend. So uh, they managed to get two wins against uh, Colorado College, which is huge for, for North Dakota trying to finish. And, you know, at, at this point, they're still chasing the, the Penrose. They're only, uh, they're less than a game back at Denver. Uh, I, I think uh, everyone really wants to finish in the top three. Um, you know, that, that probably avoids a matchup with St. Cloud or Duluth in the first round. So that 
uh, is huge. And, and I think uh, a lot of people take for granted a sweep of a team like CC. I think North Dakota and Western Michigan are the only teams in the league that haven't dropped a point to CC or Miami this year. So, you know, the, the league is deep and I think fans take for granted um, that some of those teams are still really good teams. And um, so, uh, yeah, it, it was a productive weekend for North Dakota and um, now they got a, a few weeks left to see where they'll uh, wind up in the standings. Absolutely. And we'll see, we'll follow along with your coverage, see if they can go ahead and take that top spot in the NCHC from Denver. And last but not least, Mick, it was a huge weekend for St. Cloud picking up some much needed points. Yeah. I mean, they, they had had a really, you know, the schedule was obviously not real favorable here to them here of late. I mean, at North Dakota, at Denver, uh, you know, the home game against UMD when they come back from Denver and now, and then they get West. Oh, Oh, you can uh, fatten up on, on Western Michigan. Yeah. Who's third in the pair wise. No. Um, so they, uh, on, on Friday, a, a really entertaining game. Uh, you know, I, unless you're a defensive coach, <laughs> uh, you know, it ends up five to five real back and forth, uh, you know, game. And, uh, you know, St. Saint, Saint Cloud State uh, lost in the, in, in the shootout in that, in that one. Uh, and then, but then they came back and, and played on Saturday. You know, uh, I, I heard some people talking that, you know, yeah, it was, it was more boring, but, <laughs> but it was exactly what they needed. Right. I mean, they, they needed a, a lockdown game where they were, you know, not trying to outscore people. They, they kind of, they kind of looked a little bit more like they, they looked looked in the playoffs last season. You know, I mean, where you know they I think they gave up 22 shots in the game uh, to Western Michigan, which you know Western Michigan is a very good offensive team. So you hold them down. Uh, you know, Ethan Frank got another goal, which he seemed to score every game. Uh, but uh, you know, they got the, the big news I think for them was they got they got two goals from Joe Molinar. Uh, who was actually playing on the fourth line, and one of them was on the power play. So, you know, with, with Sam Hinch is out, Molinar's kind of moved in, into playing a little bit more, and he's seen some time on the power play. He had three goals on the weekend. That was big for him uh, and actually big for, for St. Cloud State. They had not won a game since January 22nd, I mean, in regulation, which is kind of hard to believe. But, uh, you know, from a pairwise standpoint, it was, it was big. I mean, they went from – you know, they went from 10 to eight. You, you don't want to be in double digits in, in the pairwise, uh, you know, getting to be this late in the season. You want to, you want to be in those single digits so you, you, you can have a, maybe a stumble maybe in the first round of the playoffs if, if things come to that. But, uh, you know, David Rennick had a really, uh, really good game on, on Saturday. Uh, and they, they worked through some things, you know, Jack Piart it, it had kind of a, a, a rough night on, on Friday uh, and came back and played a lot better on, on, on Saturday. I mean, uh, you know, with, with Nick Perbix, uh, you know, gone uh, again, I, I think that they, they've, that was a really good sign for them that they were able to, you know, hold a really good Western Michigan team to, to one goal uh, and, and play, play that as well as they did on, on, on Saturday. So if you're a Huskies fan or whatever, I mean, that's, that's what you're hoping for is that uh, that's a building block for them. Uh, and now they, now they've got uh, Nebraska Omaha this coming weekend. Uh, actually, uh, Justin, and I talked with Dave Starman last week and I was asking him a little bit about Omaha and he said, he's just not sure that they've got enough scoring, you know, I, I, when they're playing the top teams in, in the conference uh, at the same time, it's another road series for St. Cloud State, and Omaha is not always the easiest place to, you know, to play, but after the pod last season, maybe you feel a little bit more at home uh, going and playing down at Baxter Arena, but uh, they, need to, they need to get some points. They're within four points now of, of, of uh, Minnesota Duluth for that last uh, home playoff spot. They're going to have to beat, you know, they got three more meetings with UMD. So, I mean, those games are going to be uh, fun to watch. And it's going to be interesting to see how, how, how that all kind of shakes down. Absolutely. And the season for the Huskies doesn't get any easier, especially at this point in the season. So they'll take all the points that they can get. Guys, thank you so much for all of your coverage. 
this weekend and bringing everything we needed to know into this Monday. Now, final point of our show as we wrap things up, I'm going to give you each about 30 seconds to go around and say what we should be looking out for this week or just any final thoughts. Jess, I'll start with you. I saw a tweet today uh, from a women's hockey program praising a couple of their college players that play for Switzerland now and praising them for a good tournament and noting that Switzerland had, quote, advanced to the bronze medal game. You don't advance to the bronze medal game. You don't win the silver medal. Okay, Let, let's be honest about this. You lost, so you're going to play for bronze. You don't you don't advance to there. It, it reminds me of White Bear Lake, Minnesota. They have a banner hanging from the rafters. From 1982 or 83, I believe it was, White Bear Mariner, a high school which no longer exists, lost to Edina in the state championship game. They have a banner commemorating that, which lists them as, quote, runner-up champions. Stop it. You lost, okay? You, you didn't advance. There, there's all, they're done. Um, that's my rant. Hey, teams, they love whatever banners they can get their hands on. And moving over to someone who covers a school that does have quite a few banners of their own, Matt, what you got? Um. Skyline chili is trash. Uh, if you want real chili, you don't go to Ohio, okay? It's just diarrhea on top of spaghetti. You want to know what state has good chili? Colorado. Their green chili, it's phenomenal. Had it on a burger at the Cherry Cricket this weekend. Uh, had it actually on my mashed potatoes with a, a chicken fried steak on, on Thursday from the uh, Bull and Bush Brewery. It was great. Um, Colorado green chili, phenomenal. Don't pass on it. Um, please pass on, on Skyline Chili. I'm so glad that, uh, what is that, Walmart or whatever retailers uh, have, have taken it off their shelves in, in Wisconsin. Everyone's better for it. I love it. And also to continue roasting Jess, I saw that picture you posted. It looked like you were eating just cheese. You could have added a little more chili onto it. So Brad, that what wrong do with you that. got from? <laughs> uh, Brad, what you got? Well, I think uh, for, from North Dakota, it's wait and see with Jake Sanderson and, and see how long he's going to be out here. I, 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 they're listing him as day-to-day. -day. I mean, let's be honest, he's not going to play in the Olympics. Um, the, the question is, how long is he out? You know, you're uh, potentially losing the best player in the conference for some time here. And I think they're waiting for him to come back to see exactly uh, how long he's going to be out. Cause obviously that is a huge, uh, that's a huge factor for North Dakota season. Um, you know, they're going to Duluth this weekend. One thing I uh, noted is there, uh, you know, if he signs after this season and goes pro uh, North Dakota and Duluth will have played six regular season games during Jake Sanderson's career. The Bulldogs never will have seen Jake Sanderson in a regular season game. So, um, you know, he's had some bad luck with, uh, injuries, illnesses this season, and you know uh, North Dakota's got to be hoping that they can they can get him back here, and um, we'll maybe find out more in the next uh, two weeks here. Yeah, not not some good luck going Jake Sanderson's way, but hopefully he'll be able to get back on the ice here real soon. And last but not least, Mick, send us home. I, I was able to catch, uh, you know, St. Cloud State and in, in Minnesota play in, in, in women's hockey. St. Cloud State actually led uh, two to nothing in the, after the first period uh, in, in that game. And well, you say, OK, well, what's the big deal? Well, <laughs> here's the big deal on that. You know, they they had lost they had lost 19 straight games uh, to, to the Gophers and and. You know, the, uh, the Gophers were 90 are going into that game on Friday, 98, three and three against St. Cloud State in the all time series. So you say, well, OK, well, then it is kind of a big deal. That they they had a lead and, and I will, you know, for over half of that game, they, they were leading to, you know, it was, you know, I think five minutes left in the in the second period when when the Gophers finally scored. Uh, Emma Pelosi had a, just a terrific game. I think she had 56 saves in that game. Uh, but, you know, th that top line of uh, Barine and Heise and, and Skaya uh, just ended up, you know, kind of taking over. But, uh, you know, and St. Cloud State was playing without, you know, two of their, you know, two Olympians, uh, you know, uh, Newland and, and uh, him, him LaRova are both gone to the Olympics. Uh, ended up five to three. Uh, 
uh, you know, with the Gophers winning that game, and then they they kind of uh, handled them on on uh, Saturday down at Ritter. But uh, you know, there were some there were some good signs for St. Cloud State, and and again, Pelusny. Pelusny had 55 saves in a one-to-one tie against Wisconsin, and then she has 56 saves against uh, against the Gophers in, in that game. I mean, she's she's uh, as a fifth-year player, she's having a a really good season for them, and uh, we'll see if that's you know a good sign. I guess is they're trying to you know they're going to have a huge task when they get to the playoffs because it looks like they're going to finish you know second from the bottom. So that means they're probably going to get Wisconsin or Ohio State. Uh, you know, right in the first round. So that that's probably not, uh, they're not going to fare well there, but uh, there was a lot of positive signs I thought out of, out of that game that I saw for St. Cloud State. Yeah, not an easy road up ahead for them for sure, but interesting games to watch nonetheless. Guys, thank you so much for all of your time in this week's episode. And thank you to everyone who's watching for tuning in. Make sure if you're not already to subscribe to The Rink Live on YouTube. And follow us on social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, at The Rink Live. Thank you guys so much, and we'll see you all again next week.